Okay, so our site is really starting to come together here. We've used a trace image to basically build our CSS right on top of our trace image using our guides to create the exact pixel perfect dimensions, exactly how high and exactly how wide our site's going to be. Now, important step I want to share with you here, okay? When we created these div tags for the what's new in our mission and our services, we simply made them 33%, but we didn't give any padding. So let's think about this potential problem here. Now, I go and give these uh, div tags background colors. It's going to look very silly to have this type smashing up against the box. So watch what happens here. If I go to what's new as an example, and I put in, here's my box width, my original box width of 33%. Okay. If I put in, say, 10 pixels of padding, and I have the apply option, okay, watch what happens to our services. Our services gets kicked to the next line because you can't put a 10-foot table inside of a 9-foot room. So there's no space for this. Now here's a problem if you looked at my previous videos. These are pixels, these are percentages. These are pixels, these are percentages. So how many percentages do I have to minus from this to get to where it needs to go? Well, you'd be, you got me, okay? Because percentages in pixels, oil and vinegar. Now I could, I could do this. I could change this to percentages. I can change this to say 1%, okay? Therefore, 1% left and right, I can make this 31%. I could do that. I'm going to choose a different method here. I'm going to leave the 33% exactly the way it was. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give padding to the content. If you pad the content, it doesn't affect the div tags width or height. If you pad the content, so let's understand how we can do this, right? We're going to create a rule for the H1 tag. Okay, we're going to make these H1 tags. How do I do that? Command key one. It's now an H1 tag. Command key one. It's now an H1 tag. Command key one. It's now an H1 tag. Except I accidentally hit command Q, which I don't want to do. Okay, so this is the name of our. This is the content here. Now, obviously. We want to separate this with a space. So our mission, our what's new, our services. Okay, now pay close attention to this. Okay, I want to create a rule. If we look at our design comp for a second, you will see that that's actually initial cap and it appears to be a blue. Now we can, we can sample that same color blue if you want to, and I'll show you a simple way to do this. Okay, so let's say as an example, I'm just going to make, here's my design comp. Let's just revert this to the last save version. Let's go to live view for a second. And let's revert this to the last save version. This is my original mock-up for my comp. Now, what we can do here is we can come up with different site colors by sampling this exact color. Or we can assign those colors to a rule or we can assign the colors to a tag. Okay, so as an example, let's assume in here for a second. Put my cursor over here so you can see what we're doing. Let's go to live view. So I can I'm sorry not live code, live view. I was taking that. Therefore I can scroll in and scroll out. Now again, if you go to live view, you won't be able to see that tracing comp. So I can't see the tracing comp. So let's just change this to let's just change this to tablet. Here's tablet. Let's change it to the size here. Okay. Now here's what I want to do here. I just want to sample a color. So how can I sample a color? Well, I can just say make a rule for Whatever. Let's make a rule for the H1 tag. I'm going to type in H1. So I just want to share with you, we could then sample that particular color for that particular tag by sampling the color right here. Now, we'll get into that later video, but I just want to share with you, if you want to make your 
colors exactly, exactly pixel perfect in exactly the same color. You could sample the color, okay? Just want to share the concept with you. So in this particular case, we want to create a rule specifically for, specifically for the H1 tag for main content. Now, let's think about this. If it helps you from a design standpoint, if it helps you to put these services mission what's new into a separate container div dip, and then make the rules specific for that container div, that's totally up to you. You could do that, but I just want to keep this simple. So we're going to select the tag. We're going to select the tag, make a rule. We're going to select the tag specifically for specifically for the main content. So how do I do that? I select the tag and I make a rule. So we're going to make a rule for I'm just concerned about not what's new. I don't want to come out with 50 rules. I just want to create a rule. Pay close attention to this, guys. I don't want to create an H1 rule for what's new, and an H1 rule for our mission, and an H1 rule for our services. I just want to create an H1 rule for main content, which means if there's an H1 tag inside of main content, it's going to follow these rules. Now, I like the font. Font's okay. I like the size. The size is okay. I don't like the case. I'm going to change this to capitalize and the color. Let's just sample the same blue color from here. Click. So if I hit the apply option, there's my new fonts. Now, what I want to have happen here is I want to add my font, my H1 font. So I'm going to select box. And from the left here, we're going to say to the left, 1.2 M spaces. And hit the apply option. So now it's indented 1.2 M spaces. Make a change, save a change. Now if I look back at my design comp and I scroll down here for a bit. Sorry about that here. I had a slight glitch with my software here. So this, these are going to be the rules for the headers for this section. So as an example, even though we set the width of this to 33%, 33%, 33%, if you put padding on the contents, then it's not going to be affected. So as an example, if I hit the return key here and I start putting in some content here, okay, notice that paragraph is not padded. Paragraph is not padded because I don't have a rule for that. So how do we do this? We can get a rule specifically for P when P is inside of main content. So I select a tag, I select a tag, and I make a rule. Select a tag, make a rule. So we're going to say we're just concerned about not P for what's new. Now you can if you want to make it different, but it's not very common. You're going to make the font different for every single div box. That's kind of kooky. I'm just going to say P when P is inside of main content. The only thing we're going to do here is we're going to pad it to the left and pad it to the right. So we're going to pad to the right, say, 1M space. We're going to pad to the left, say, 1M space. And hit OK. Therefore, my content is going to be padded inside that box. How cool is that? Now, I'm going to go to a website right now and just grab some text. So just hang on just one second. OK, so just so we have some content to put here. I'm just going to take the same amount of content, and I'm going to put it here. Actually, that's a little too much here. Let's just put, say, content up to here. And I just went to a website called Ibsen Worm, and I'm just going to fill it with dummy text. And I'm going to take that same content, and I'm going to put it in each box. So I'm just sharing with you how simple it is to do this. It's child's play. Hit the return key, paste. Return key, paste. Okay. Now, again, notice that it's not affecting the boxes because now I have three perfectly aligned columns with three separate div tags that are flowed to the left. So if you want to have more space to the left or more space to the right, we can do that by simply going to our P for paragraph tag. Okay. P for paragraph tag, box to the right, let's say to the right, let's make this one point for M spaces. Okay. Now we can also do this. So let's say we want to make this block type. I don't want to make this block type, but if you did, 
double click, come to the box, the block section, and justify this text alignment, justify left and right. So if you hit the apply option, you will see that this now becomes block type. It's now blocked out like a magazine layout. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just going to say that you could do that. Okay, so this is just going to create flexible design to your site. So we'll continue the next video and get the rest of the site built. So you're seeing how simple this is to put together. I can make things pixel perfect by just bringing in a tracing image. Any website, underscore, A and Y, five underscores can be built the same way. So you can simply build a comp or you can steal a site that you like on, on Y, bring it as a tracing image, put the CSS right over on top of it. This is genius, genius, genius. I didn't make this stuff up. I'm just benefiting from it. I've never seen a video with the exception of my other videos that show you how to build a site using a trace image. Obviously, I didn't make this up. This is built in the Dreamweaver, but nobody teaches it. Everybody's too busy slicing and dicing and bringing PSD files and tables and code and this and that. Use Dreamweaver to your benefit. Dreamweaver is a wonderful tool. Get to know the tool. Get to know how I can use my mouse and just make a few clicks and get it done. Talk to you soon.